Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about free time. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, in your free time, do you learn a lot of new frameworks and languages, not necessarily related to your work, to keep yourself updated with current and latest trends? Yes, I do. I do a lot of that. A lot, a lot of that. It's um, something that I really love. I think it's great. Uh, I am a little bit more selective these days with like just how wide I go when I try to learn different things. Uh, so I have a few favorites, of course, the few favorite languages and tools and areas of programming that I find extra interesting. When I first started out, uh, I started out learning, of course. I, I like to segment things into this is uh, I, I have my own personal saying where I say uh, master the st master the skills you use every day and practice the skills that you will need tomorrow and what I mean by that is basically that uh, the things that are you really depend on on every day those are the things that you should get really really good at and I well, I'm very fortunate because my personal interest level is very high for that. Anything that I can feel like this really has is useful to me, I will put a lot of effort into. And then, of course, there are things that I that are sort of useful, things that I kind of go, I've had a few of these sorts of issues and they were a little bit tricky. I should really learn a little bit about that. And I think that if I learn a little bit about that, I will have a better holistic understanding. As an example, you kind of... Uh, when you work as a web developer, you don't necessarily need to learn much about the operating system, for example. But I know that, well, actually, you know, there's been quite a few times where I've needed to figure out what's going on with my VMs or my, my instances or stuff like that. Maybe I should learn a little bit more of what the system admin, as a sysadmin actually does. Just some tips and tricks from the trade to like get some some more holistic perspective on the thing, right? And in some cases it's been like, you know what, it's really hard. Like I'm trying to show someone to how to, how I want to build this thing here, but I can't really express it. Maybe there are a few designers who could me give me some pointers on how do I create some nice artboards or wireframes or something like that so I can just show my idea. I'm not trying to be a designer, I'm not trying to be like a professional I'm just trying to get those basics in place and I love doing this I love to try to figure out new ways like re very recently I realized that you know what there's a lot of really cool concepts in the cloud uh, in cloud solutions that are virtual representations of physical network devices maybe I should look into the network devices a little bit because I've already I mean this is of course me kind of just it I like to say that the knowledge is like uh, it's a black hole it the more knowledge you acquire the more you can suck in and the wider and wider you get and the same thing goes for me here so I didn't start out trying to I mean I'm not saying that a complete beginner needs to learn about sysadmin related stuff for n like hardware network devices and stuff like that and different standards for wireless communication that's not going to be super relevant for you if you haven't even learned what CSS is but once you have uh, learning more and more is is I think I, I look like I look at this as uh, mental traveling as educate uh, having a wider understanding of c concepts that are adjacent and in some cases overlapping to the area that you're really focused on is a very good and healthy thing uh, and it has helped me a lot it has made I, I think I mean my understanding of software and my ability to make good decisions on behalf of my company and my own products and so forth has gone up immensely now you don't have to do this all the time and I think that this is something that is a little bit sad and in some cases it is unfortunately tr unfortunately true and that is when you al when you hear the companies only hire rockstar developers and companies sort of expect that any worthwhile developer should just be doing this all the time and i don't think that that is a healthy way of uh, th that's it's not healthy because what basically is happening then is that you're converting the people who are living a lifestyle because it is a lifestyle to be interested in in tech and to 
always be interested in learning more things and so forth. That is a lifestyle and that's not for everybody. There are many programmers who have other interests apart from this or who have some interest and they do a little bit of learning but being like fanatic about the whole thing that shouldn't be the norm it's not in it's not reasonable and so what you should know is that it is important for you to have a certain level of interest you can't be too complacent now when i say that a lot of people will think, oh, that means that I have to read news articles all the time and so forth and just to keep myself sort of up to date. And I go, yes and no. You need to know what is relevant in, your, especially in your region at the very least, so that you don't get out of, too out of date. And you don't have to think about that as being something you do every single day. Because that's not necessarily going to be all that valuable to you unless you want to be bleeding edge or cutting edge... Uh, uh, in your knowledge of IT, the thing that really like, you just need to sporadically make sure that you know about the latest tools, have some news input. You can subscribe to maybe one or two newsletters and just read a few articles that seem interesting when they seem interesting. It's just a maintenance type of thing. You don't have to know about the latest and the trendiest. If you want a really good example, and I think that this is I think this is absolutely beautiful. Now I'm not going to say this or that about the Java community, but if you want to let's say that you are in JavaScript land or you're working with React or Angular or like really really trying to be on the edge of things, try to go to one of your local Java meetups and you will see what I'm talking about. In the the average I'm not saying just Java, it can happen in C# -sharp as well in many cases. The average corporate developer, and not everybody who does Java is corporate, but a lot of them are, because a lot of big companies have been using Java for years, they are still on stacks that might be t like 5, 10 years old, and they're going to a meetup to basically learn what React is. Now this is very good because they're keeping themselves up to date. But for someone who knows that this thing has been around for quite some time and it's like this big deal, it seems kind of hilarious, like they seem behind the times. But that doesn't matter because the work that they are being paid to do doesn't leverage React. So now they're learning it to keep themselves up to date. And you can have the same sort of slow paced type of thing. It's um, it, it's the same thing with everything. Like you have some things like in, in even in society, some organizations, they are really, really cutting edge and move super, super fast. And then they pave the way for the more slow moving organizations. And so the slow more organizations go, oh yeah, this seems pretty interesting. And sure, they're behind the times, but they're still keeping themselves relevant enough that they don't com become completely obsolete. So what I want you to take away from this is that I personally spend a lot of free time learning about frameworks and languages and tools and so forth because I absolutely love it. Love it. And I don't think that it, it is for everybody. Uh, I think that you should really ask yourself what your values are and what you think is interesting. I think that in order for you to safeguard yourself a little bit, you need to have some maintenance. Look at this whole thing as a bit of exercising, but for your mind and for your career. Some people want to go to the gym every single day and just hit it all the time. And some people are just fine doing some jogging or some slight workouts a few days a week, tops. You can put yourself there. and. There, I promise you that's going to be enough for quite a lot of different uh, companies out there and I don't want you to get into this headspace that if you're not a super passionate rockstar developer who pushes it to the max all the time then you're not a good programmer because that's simply not true there is a range of developers some people are at the top of the range and some people are in the middle and I'm very sorry to say that there are some people that are on the lo low slope you want to be in the middle. That's a very good place to be. Have a great day.